Jesus more to set thy people free from our fears and sins release us let us find our rest in Good morning and Merry Christmas, Life Changers. Stand on your feet this morning. Give God a big hand clap of praise. We welcome you today and thank you for being here with us. It is the most wonderful time of the year, the time when our Savior was born. We want you to sit back this morning and enjoy service with us today as we change things up just a bit. We're going to be bringing you a special Christmas message from some of our remnant kids. This morning, our kiddos will share some favorite things that they love about Christmas, and we'll get a glimpse into what it would be like to have myself and Pastor Todd as your pastors if we were just a little bit younger. Our praise team going to share some favorite Christmas memories and traditions with you, and we will enjoy celebrating the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, together. So let's give him another hand clap of praise this morning. One, two, one, two, three, and by his mother's side, feeling the Savior inside a manger, oh, what a glorious night, oh, what a glorious night, I hear the angels sing, hallelujah, let the earth receive her King, I know that Sing it out, Jesus Christ is born. 
shepherds wondered, they couldn't hide it, told everyone inside. All were amazed when they heard how God came down on this glorious night. God came down on this glorious night. I hear the angels singing. Earth receive her King. I know your love has come. Sing it out. Jesus Christ is born. Jesus Christ is born. Amen. If you'll just stand on your feet this morning, and again, I appreciate Miss Hazel, which is my mini-me here. We do want to thank you for your offering today as our ushers come, and they give to that, give you the opportunity to give. We have several different ways that you could give on the screen. We do appreciate your giving today. We love you guys and appreciate you. Merry Christmas.
Till from heaven you came round, there was mercy in your eyes to fulfill all and brought to a virgin came the word from a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt.
Chambers. I'm Pastor Todd. And today I'm going to um, teach you the story of Jesus, aka the first Christmas, aka the best story ever, aka there's no more AKAs, <laughs> aka I really like this story. So, um, it starts with Mary in her house, um, having fun, and an angel comes. Named Gabriel, she said that Mary was going to have a baby, and the baby has to be named Jesus, no other name. Not even Lucas, which is the best name on earth. And so Joseph had a dream that an angel gave him, and an angel spoke to him in the dream. And I'm pretty sure um, he, Joseph made like a face in his dream and was like, hmm? And the angel might have gone like, Okay, maybe I'll just scooch a little back from you a little bit. <laughs> Mary came and told Joseph um, about the angel, and they weren't all the way married. Dun, dun, dun! Which I am pretty sure Little Caesars is named after him. <laughs> Anywho, um, he made this new rule. Where is it? I feel like it was already there, but it just came back, like on McDonald's when, um, like you take away a burger for a lot of years, like a two or three, and then they bring it back eventually, and everybody's like, ooh. Like on Sonic when they're like missing a cheeseburger or a fried cheese or a hot dog. <laughs> I mean, when Wacky Packs go out, they just stay out on Happy Meals. Like, it just changes to another theme. But sometimes they leave the posters up. I don't know why. Sometimes they just leave the posters up of the other Happy Meals. They don't do that with Wacky Packs, though. Wacky Packs don't have posters. They should. Well, anywho, back to the um, story. The Emperor Caesar Augustus made a new rule. When uh, someone got married, they would have to have, um, they would have to go to the place where the dad was born. Otherwise, they couldn't get taxed. By that, I mean they were trying to count how many people were in the world, and they achieved it roughly. They got to Bethlehem, which um, Mary rode on a donkey since she couldn't walk all, all the way. Which I'm pretty sure... That Joseph should have ridden a donkey as well. That's why he was like, I need a donkey. <laughs> so, when they got there, all the hotels, inns, and motels were sold out. Even though um, Mary was pregnant, they still wouldn't let them in. So they had to go to a stable, which there were like animals and stuff, live bugs, maybe even wasps. There were definitely poop. Poopy, no, definitely poop. Probably. I wasn't there, so I have no idea. I wasn't remembering. 
I'm not that old. Not old at all. In the in the pictures, they're not near a barn, but I'm pretty sure they were near a barn, or at least separate. And separates were in the field. Certain angel came, and they were frightened. And he told them about Jesus. And so then a bunch of angels came, and they sang, We wish you a Merry Christmas. <laughs> they didn't sing that. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. <laughs> if they did sing that, they were like, what? <laughs> After the shape of the star, speaking of star, there was a big star in the sky, and three wise men, but the Bible didn't actually say there were three. Three gifts, so they thought there were four or three. What if there was this one person that just gave three gifts? Okay. They were like, wait, no, 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 When they got there, Jesus was um, in a crib type thing with hay in it, wrapped in a cloth or a scarf or a blanket or a saddle. Like, in, there used to be like blanket saddles, so that might have been the blanket saddle. Anyhow, the the gifts, the three gifts were gold, myrrh, and frankenstein. Frankincense, not Frankenstein. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was just funny. <laughs> not Frankenstein, Frankincense. Frankenstein is creepy. And that is the story of Jesus. This was Pastor Todd. See you next Sunday. Bye. Hey, buddy. I wanted to introduce Lucas, my mini-me. Can you tell him thank you for that message this morning? Great job. Great job. He is awesome. He got it right when he was chasing those rabbits, though. I do that every now and then. Uh, and so I think he's been paying attention whether we think he was or not. So we give God glory this morning. Thank you, buddy. Your mama is right over there. Uh, we appreciate you being here today, whether you were invited or maybe you came out of, uh, out of a need to be in the house of God. We appreciate you being here. I would never pick on anybody or embarrass anybody, but if there's anyone in here named Kyle, I just want to say thank you for being here today. Uh, I know you have made your friend's day by accepting his invitation, and you've actually made my day as well. And so thank you so much. Uh, our online family, we just give God glory for them. Uh, if you don't mind giving them a hand. Our first-time guests, whether you, were, uh, whether you were drugged to church by your mom or guilted into coming to church, we just believe whatever reason you're here, we know you're here by divine appointment. And we just welcome our first-time guests. Would you do that for us this morning? And we are blessed with a rotation of congregation uh, with all the jobs that work, 12 swings and all that. We're blessed with a rotating congregation of about 500 people. So can you make yourself uh, feel welcome this morning? We're thankful that you chose today to spend your morning with us at Life Changers. And we're going to talk about Christmas memories a little bit, of Christmas traditions, the things we love about Christmas. And we could probably do that all around the room. Uh, I think that we have all different ideas of what Christmas looks like. I think sometimes it looks like spending time with family, and other times it's about the gifts. And whatever your Christmas looks like, we want you to cherish those memories, cherish those traditions. And if you don't mind, I'm going to allow some little guys to tell you what they like about Christmas.
And my favorite thing about Christmas is Jesus' birthday. Uh, I want to have a boy for Christmas. <laughs> for you. Um, um, I'm thankful. Um, my favorite thing about Christmas is um, spending time with my family and opening my friends' presents. Um, Jesus' birthday? Well, my name is Aiden, and my favorite, favorite thing about Christmas is presents. Hi. My name is Hazel, and my three favorite things about Christmas are Jesus, the presents, and the snow. Hi, my name is Isaac, and my favorite thing about Christmas is spending time with family. Hello, my name is Andrew, and my favorite thing about Christmas is that I can be with my family. Snow. Get a present. Hello, my name is Brody Allen. My favorite thing about Christmas is food. Hi, my name is Lucas. And my three favorite things about Christmas are Jesus, the present, and the decoration. My favorite thing about Christmas, Jesus is born. I get to spend time with my family, my cousins, my friends, all kinds of stuff. You get to open gifts. Yeah, that's about it. And have a happy New Year's and Merry Christmas. Hi, I'm Brianna, and my favorite thing about Christmas is ugly sweaters. Hi, I'm Miss Robin, and my favorite thing about Christmas is Jesus. We don't all get to do videos, but we may do that next year. I think it's a lot of fun, and I think about those kids, and uh, we're going to ask them some more personal stuff throughout the year, so y'all be prepared for them to just be brutally honest uh, about mom and dad. That won't be for Christmas. That would just be for fun for me. Uh, I think it's awesome when we just get these times and these days, I'm going to call them sort of lazy days, to come to the house of the Lord. Does anybody feel any pressure? No pressure. And so you come and you're visiting and you're thinking the pastor's going to preach right at me and he's going to tell me all the things I've done wrong all year and all those kind of things. But really, that's not what we're here for. We really want you to know how much we love you and how much we care about you, how much the person that invited you loves you and cares about you. And so when I think about the memories and traditions, they probably more than likely include you uh, in some of their stories. They include you in some of their dinners and the funny things that's happened throughout the year. And so we're going to talk about memories and traditions with the praise team just for a second. I know you get to see them every Sunday and hear them minister, but they're going to share a few things with you that you may not already know. My favorite memory is... Uh, when me and Leanne were dating, 
she would first call me over her first Christmas to, to help her put up her tree. So I would always, she would hold the top and I would be at the bottom straightening it out and uh, and it's always been like that ever since. So that's my greatest memory because we, we still do it to this day. This one oddly comes to mind, but my favorite Christmas memory was when I got a microscope for Christmas. That was my most favorite Christmas present ever because it jump-started my passion into science for college. <laughs> My favorite Christmas memory is the time that me and my brother got a GameCube for Christmas and we played it for hours and hours and hours. So my favorite <laughs> Christmas memory is when Santa brought us a puppy and it was a big surprise. <laughs> and all we got was the puppy and nothing to take care of him so it was a big surprise. Favorite Christmas memory is probably staying up late, wanting to get at those presents, but never managing to stay up late long enough. My favorite Christmas memory is getting a Walton family dollhouse for Christmas. You don't know who the Waltons are? They were really cool, and it was a great gift, and I remember it like it was yesterday. Favorite Christmas memory is waking up and finding my Lionel train set underneath the tree when I was a little kid. I don't really have a favorite Christmas memory, I just love it all. Uh, Christmas presents and people gathering together, families and uh, kids laughing and all celebrating Jesus is my absolute favorite. Uh, my favorite time of the year is Christmas. Probably favorite Christmas memory was Christmas of 2010. Uh, the kids were just little. Uh, and it started snowing on the day we were going to go get the Christmas tree. And it was just one of those incredible uh, Saturdays at Christmas that you think Norman Rockwell is going to be somewhere painting a portrait of this somewhere. So we've got an incredible picture of the kids just bailing out of the truck in the snow, in the snow suits. And we went into the Christmas tree farm and found our Christmas tree. Actually, we found two Christmas trees that year. And it has grown to five now. Uh, but that's one of my favorite memories, just watching the children enjoy the magic of Christmas. And that whole day was just very magical and a lot of snow, and it was just one of those things that only happens once in a lifetime. My favorite Christmas memory uh, is probably when I was um, old enough to be in the Christmas play at church. I worked my way up from a shepherd boy to a wise guy. And when I became the wise guy, I felt like I had reached the top. So that's my favorite Christmas memory. My favorite Christmas memory is going to my grandparents' house. And around dark, we would all sit down, gather together and sit on the floor. And my papa would read the birth of Jesus every year. And I'm thankful for that. All these years being, spoke the word of God over my life every year. And to remember and be reminded of what this season is all about. And our favorite tradition at the Turpin Ranch is on Christmas Eve, we start watching the Christmas story and let it play for 24 hours, and we watch it about 12 times. Um, I guess my favorite tradition would be um, one of my grandparents every year for Christmas also, staying the weekend with them and having dinner with everybody I've not seen in forever. My favorite Christmas tradition is uh, every Christmas morning we go down to my brother's house and I get to watch my niece and nephew open Christmas presents and their eyes just light up. It's, it's just awesome. <laughs> favorite Christmas tradition? Probably having breakfast at my parents' house even after we, I was married and always had to have oyster stew. That was a Christmas tradition. Oyster stew on Christmas morning with the family. Probably my favorite Christmas tradition is when my brother and I were growing up, we would create little mini Christmas play productions and put on for mom and dad on Christmas Eve. They had no clue what was going on. It was always a complete surprise, no matter how wacky. <laughs> and my favorite Christmas tradition, opening up presents early with my kids when they were young. Well, my favorite Christmas tradition is um, when all of the family goes to my mom's um, 
for Christmas Eve. And my mom cooks and she makes a table full of most delicious desserts. That's my favorite tradition. I like it all. I like the lights. If you've been by my house, you know I like to decorate outside. I love the food. You can look at me and see that. Enjoy the cookies and the cakes and the fellowship and just uh, those traditions, you know, just being with family and friends and the food and the fellowship and, you know, I guess in the last 20 years, uh, that's more important to me than any gift is just being able to uh, fellowship with, with friends and family and enjoy the season. My favorite Christmas tradition, we actually started probably about eight years ago when our grandson Lucas was about a year old. And we started having Christmas with um, Chad Montana, Lucas Hazel, and this year Liam. And we always have Christmas on the Sunday before Christmas actually happens. And so this year we'll be having Christmas, I think it's like on the, the 19th. It's today. It's today? It's today. It's, it's today. When is Christmas? What day is it on? Friday. So today is the 19th? Yeah. Hey guys, I gotta go. Sorry, I'm late for dinner. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. You may have been in one of those memories. I like that someone said getting to meet with family and have dinner with family, but really what mattered was a table full of desserts. And I think that sort of says it all today. You can endure some family for a good dessert, I'm just saying. Uh, but we appreciate you being here. I am going to read the greatest story uh, ever told, the greatest story that we'll ever experience. I'm going to be brief. Uh, we're going to send you out of here, hopefully thinking about Christmas a little bit different, putting the hustle and bustle hopefully behind you and not spending the next five days trying to catch up, but just settling yourself I love the music they were playing with that. I think we get so caught up in stuff that we forget. Uh, this really is about family, and it really is about Jesus. And so I want to share this story, the greatest story, right? You have your own great story, but I think that Jesus' story is the best. In Luke chapter 2 and verse number 8, it says, Now they were in the same country, shepherds living out in the fields, watching over, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them. And the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said unto them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign unto you that you will find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. You see, I think we forget sometimes that this really is the greatest story ever told. I can't tell you a story about my life without including his story. Because us being on this side of his story lets us see that he stepped out of the portals of glory. He gave up his royalty for the moment, and he came to earth just for you and me. For 32 years, I've been serving the Lord, and I've been putting this story number one in my life. I've called this relationship personal because I'll tell you, and you can tell me as well, I know that if it were only you, Jesus would have still come to earth. Had it only been me, he would have still come to earth. He loves you more than you can imagine, more than you think or imagine. So many of us kind of gauge his love by the wrongs we've done or the things we've done, right? We think because we've done this, then he doesn't love us. Can I tell you something? Scripture says nothing can separate you from the love of God. Nothing. You can sin all you sin, but look, he still loves you. Does he like your sin? Nah, not so much, right? It's not about that. But what we're talking about today is the love that he has for you. You can't go too far that he doesn't love you. You could be the worst of sinners and on your deathbed, guess what? Nothing can separate you from the love of God. Whether you choose him or not, he already chose you. If you, cho if you don't choose him, he already chose you. And so if in that moment on your deathbed, in that moment of decision in the house of God someday, maybe today on this hill, that you say, you know what? 
knowing that he loved me enough to step out of eternity and into time, loved me enough to live as an example for 30 years, minister for three and a half years, and at 33 years old, he gave his life for me. Whether you choose him or not, he already chose you. And so we stand here today, maybe teeter-tottering, maybe you're on the seesaw of indecision. Uh, I, I don't know that he, lo he loves you. So we've settled that. Now you're maybe balancing a little bit of, do I want him to be a part of my life? He wants to be a part of your life. And so when we look at that, I think we balance ourselves in the wrong category. You see, he died for all sin, every sin, no matter what it looks like to you and me, no matter what it sounds like to anyone else, no matter who judged you yesterday or who will likely judge you tomorrow. He came with this story that we shared just now. It was a story of love. It was a story of compassion. It's a story of hope and a story of peace. And I want to tell you that when he came, he said, he sent the angel and he said, do not be afraid for behold, I bring good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. The privilege we have of a true story, the privilege we have knowing that Jesus, the savior of the world made his entrance humbly, right? Lying in a manger so that we don't think we have to have this much money to serve God or this much money for him to love us. But he let us know real quick, though he could have rode in on a steed and just called it settled, he came in as an olive skin baby, lying in a manger, not even, listen, not even enough to go into an inn. But he said, I'm willing to let everyone know whatever walk of life they are, wherever they've been, whatever color their skin is, and whatever's gone on in their life, I love them enough to come. And I love that he says, I bring good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. And when he said that, it wasn't that I bring uh, judgment to all people, right? He didn't say I bring condemnation to all people. He didn't say I bring a string of rules to all people or a big, uh, a loud, I told you so. But he said, I bring good tidings, which shall be to all people. And that all people is you. That all people was me. And so I accepted my personal relationship with Christ 32 years ago. And the privilege that we have this morning as musicians, as singers, uh, those that participated in our videos, maybe the ones that greeted you at the door, the ones that waved at you in the parking lot, and you're like, why is there someone waving at me in the parking lot? But whatever reason it is, he wanted you to know, she wanted you to know that you're loved up here on this hill and that God loves you enough to send his son that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. And so the great part of this story, it is a story of salvation, a story of hope, a story of those that feel unloved, he loves you today. Those that feel hopeless, he wants to speak hope into your life. Those that feel helpless, he wants to bring help your way. And I think he can do that this morning if you're willing to accept it. We have people that we've been blessed with to hand out food boxes this past Sunday. We've delivered 54 food boxes to McDowell County to some great people over there that's just had a terrible year, right? They've had a rough go of it. And we didn't do it for accolades. We didn't do it for a pat on the back. We actually did it so that they knew somebody loved them. And while we were doing that, we heard stories of people that wouldn't accept the food box because they don't want a handout. And so they didn't want a handout, but can you receive it in love? You see, God isn't offering us a handout. He's offering us salvation. He's offering, offering us an opportunity to have eternity in heaven. He's offering us a moment. Scripture says that we, if we'll accept him as our Savior, he cast all our sin, all our wrongdoings, all of our failures and mistakes. And here's the beauty, the thing that you've been carrying draped on your shoulder, the shame, the guilt, the regret. He cast all of that as far as the east is from the west, never to be remembered again. And so his story becomes my story. That 32 years ago in a little church in Austinville, Virginia, that God spoke to my heart and he loved on my heart and he didn't make me feel less and he didn't call out all my sin, but he called out my name and I accepted him as my Lord and Savior 32 years ago. And so this morning could be the part of your story that lines up with his story. And so if you'll stand with me just for a moment, we're going to pray and I'm going to ask you if you have a tradition, do you have any memories? Would you like to make this your new tradition? This, your greatest Christmas memory. That on December the 19th, 2021, I was lost and undone without God, but I was given an opportunity. No one called my sin out. Nobody told me how worthless or useless I was, but somebody told me about a Jesus that was born in a manger, 
an olive-skinned baby that stepped out of eternity and into time so that ultimately he gave his life at Calvary. You see, that is the greatest story. That would be the greatest memory. And I can tell you that when your story lines up with his story, you'll never be the same. When you begin to find value in him instead of seeking value in everything else. You see, all the houses and property, they don't really give you value. All the relationships you've had and the ones you stunk up and the ones you got right, they really don't give you value. And all the things that you've tried to make yourself feel better but came short, can I tell you, that doesn't give you your value. What gives us our value is that he said that from the moment you were conceived, actually he says before you were conceived, he knew you. But he said he saw you in your mother's womb. And while you were but a substance, how beautiful is that? The very thing that scientists are telling that the baby is not a baby but a substance, guess what? They were right. But God saw value. And he said, while you were but a substance, I fashioned your days for you. I had a plan for your life. And I saw you on December 19, 2021, standing at Life Changers Christian Center at a moment of decision or at a moment of indecision. And today is the day that you say, I want him, I choose him because he chose me. Or you walk away and you let God deal with you this week. And maybe by next week you say, I choose him. You see, the thing about him, God doesn't give up on you. God doesn't quit on you. Jesus didn't quit on you. And though you make errors in judgment, though you make mistakes, though there's failures in your life, he is ever present. He is always there. And I promise you, like the prodigal son, if you don't know the story, dig it out uh, of the word. Just put in Google prodigal son. As the prodigal son had gone and squandered everything his dad had given him, but the dad prayed for him. He believed for him. And when he saw him coming from afar off, dad didn't run at him with all the I told you so's and why'd you waste all your money and look at you now. But dad ran to him. He ran off the hill. He met him where he was at. And he kissed him on the cheek. He wrapped his arms around him and he said, make ready. We're going to have a feast. We're going to have a party tonight because my son that was lost has come home. And so this morning, if you're not home already, if you don't have a relationship with Christ, can I just ask you to come back home? Come on home. Let's pray this morning. God, we love you today. We give you glory in this house. God, we're so thankful for these families, these friends, Lord, that we're bold enough to extend an invitation to their friend, to their family. And so, God, today, it's not by happenstance anyone's here. It's not by coincidence. But, God, you saw this day from the foundations of the earth. You saw all of our ugly. You saw all of our stuff. And, Lord, you love us anyway. And so, Lord, if there be one person in this building that doesn't know you as their Savior, that has never said, I want a relationship with Christ, God, would you just love on them this morning? Lord, would you just wrap your arms around them this morning and let them know that you see value? Let them know that you see worth. Let them know that there is a purpose for their life. There is a plan for their life that has been ordained by the hand of God. And, Lord, would you just ask them to walk it out with you? And so, Lord, while you're loving on them, I want to give them an opportunity to say a simple prayer. If that's you this morning with your heads bowed and your eyes closed, can you or would you make this the greatest Christmas memory? Would you possibly just say a prayer with me? And it is that simple. He said, if you'll confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, then you shall be saved. And so I want you to be saved if you're not. Maybe you are saved, but you've kind of dabbled around and you're thinking, man, I just need to check myself and just get back in line with God. Whatever that looks like this morning, would you pray with me out loud or to yourself? Would you just say this? Heavenly Father, forgive me of my sins. Come into my life. Lord, make me new. I choose you as my risen Savior because you first chose me. Lord, I give you glory. Lord, I'm yours, and I'll never be the same in Jesus' name. Now, God, I pray boldness over every person or any person that prayed that simple prayer or prays it even after this service. God, I pray, Lord, that you just give them boldness and strength, that you'd give them courage to stand, the willingness to fight, the tenacity to stay in when it seems like they can't go another step. God, may the ones that came in today without hope find hope. Those that came in needing help find help. Those that 
felt like they were unreachable, God, may they feel that you have reached down from the portals of glory and wrapped your loving arms around them. And God, we give you praise right now. We give you glory right now. We count this service one of our greatest memories. And as we look back over our shoulder next week or next year, we're going to give you glory for this day, this defining moment on December 19, 2021, the day I made up my mind to receive him as my Lord and Savior. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Can somebody say amen this morning? Would you give him a hand clap of praise? I'm not going to ask this morning who prayed that prayer, but I'm going to believe by faith you did. And I'm going to believe by faith that God is going to show himself strong for you this week. I challenge you, though, before we leave, that maybe you mention it to somebody this week. Maybe you just say, hey, I'm changing some things. You don't have to be bold as you will want to, maybe. But just be sure to tell someone what God has done for you. If you'll be seated for two minutes, we're going to show you uh, one more video. And then Montana and the praise team are going to sing you guys out. Uh, I do want to remind you that a great tradition to have is our Wednesday night services when we do Life Changers on the Road online. Another great tradition to have is to come on uh, Thursday that we have our men's and women's ministry. It's called Women of Worship and Men of Valor. We do that on the fourth Thursday of every month. And also a great memory to have would be if you were a new guest, a, a guest for the first time, that you went back and grabbed a gift today, filled out a card, and you went right over to this door, and at this door, behind this door, is a meet and greet, and there's snacks. That's why I go. Uh, there's snacks, there's drinks, if you're parched from being in here listening to me. Uh, we just want you to know about the church and what we have to offer here. And so while we're building relationships, while we're building memories, right, let's remember the reason for this season, and it is Jesus Christ. Enjoy this video, and God bless you guys. Action. <laughs> are we rolling? We are. Why'd you come in here looking like that? Oh, wait, that's Dolly Parton video. Favorite Christmas memory. Let me think a second. Was that 91? 93. Had to be the Christmas of 93. The, the Blizzard the of, blizzard of, blizzard of 93. 93. Old Steve and I both were working together at night. Yep. Midnight shift, it was snowing so hard you couldn't see your hand in front of your face. It was bad, really bad. So we're riding together because we only have one four wheel drive to go That's around. It. And we get a radio call of a disabled vehicle yes. stuck in a snowbank. Stuck in the snowbank. So and here we go. We're yeah. off. We're headed that way. Going what? 20. 20. 20. Maybe. Maybe. I thought 15. Snow, maybe. 20. Probably. 20. We'll say 20. Sounds better. Sounds better. Sounds legal. Yeah. So we get there, get out, and Steve gets out, and I'm trying to put on a coat that's too small and I get thought, my mittens on. And I thought, what, why is anybody driving a convertible on a night like tonight? There's convertibles stuck in the snowbank. Oh, you Buried. I oh, see the tail light. Tail lights. Two little red tail lights. And, and there was a blinking red light out in the front. I still don't know what that was. I can't explain it. And so we couldn't call for a record because it was. Couldn't get records out. It was Christmas Eve. Christmas and everybody Eve. was home snuggled in their bed. Well, but you know. Jerry being Jerry, yeah, he eliminated it. We uh, he did. He made lemonade out of lemons. We he had a winch. But we took that old Dodge power charger ram. What was that thing called? Power charger. Power ram. I don't charger. know. Big truck. Big truck. Big tires. Big winch. Had a winch on it. Steve grabbed that thing, took it up there, put it on the back of it. Right on the bumper. Looked like a Volkswagen bumper, but I could tell it was made in another country because it yeah. wasn't American. It, it wasn't American. Wrong. Somewhere else. So we pulled it out, and while we were pulling out, some big fella come around the side of the snow, and he was laughing. And I thought, man, this is not something to laugh about. But I, the funniest thing is wearing a red satin suit and a you know red hat. It's yeah, weird. We, you know, we we thought he was in some kind of band or something playing for a Christmas party, but yeah, he said he wasn't. He said he had places to go, so. We winched him out. We got him out. He got them deer out in front of him. I thought he'd hit them, but apparently they were hooked to this Volkswagen. Yeah. And he took off up I-81 toward exit 80. That thing launched. It Crazy. took off out. And Crazy. When, when you when he was going down the road, you could hear it. And what did that cat say? Something about Merry Christmas to all. And to all, all a good, good night. night. That's what it was. That's it. That's what I remember. That was our favorite. Christmas. Favorite one. That's our favorite memory. That's the one. That's it. Yep. Bye.
yourself a merry little Christmas like the old time game. From now on, our troubles will be miles away. Give God a hand clap of praise. And on behalf of Pastor Tammy and I, we pray you guys have a great Christmas. I will tell you this, we are thankful for second service because my bride just realized that was not a convertible Volkswagen that they pulled out of a snowbank. And she said, I just got it. This is awesome. And so <laughs> from the Christmas of 93, you can thank Steve and Jerry that Santa made his rounds. God bless you guys. Have a great Christmas. See you next week.